Hello, science learners and enthusiasts. Thank you so much for following on my video. So this will be our first video for grade 8 K-12 science subject. But before we will start and focus on our discussions on our first topic, let us have first a very short uh, review on your previous topics or one of your previous topics in grade 7 science. So in your grade 7 science, you learn about motion. Right? So motion in physics or in science, it is defined as a phenomenon in which an object change its position over time. It is mathematically described in terms of displacement which means the distance that uh, it covers, and then the velocity, acceleration, speed, and of course, the time. So that is how motion is defined in science, especially in physics. Also, if you could still remember in your science activity, you describe motion or interpreted motion in different ways. You created a visual representations by using objects like uh, tape charge and motion charts. And you also discuss about this what we call the uniform and the non-uniform motion. So let us have a very quick uh, refresher on the uniform motion a very short uh, refresher on the uniform motion uniform motion is described where an object travels or move in a straight line at a constant speed so again the keyword for uniform motion if an object covers or move at a straight line in a straight line at a constant speed now we also have this non-uniform motion where the object covers an equal distances or displacement at an equal time interval so again when we say non-uniform motion it is when and the object covers or move and a certain displacement or distance, an equal displacement or distance at a uniform or equal time interval. When we say non-uniform motion, it is when the object covers an unequal or not equal displacement or distance at an equal time interval all right so let us have a very a concrete example so for example let us have this boxes so for an instance uh, this box represents jeepney so when when a jeepney uh, starts it speeds up right so for example uh, the the machine the the machine will the engine will start then it about to run or move then it speeds up but when the jeepney about to reach the stop point or or the stop sign it slowly slows down so the 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 jeepney actually covers a different displacement at an equal time interval from the starting point to the end point so when the Japanese starts the engine starts then it's move fast and then when it about to reach the stop sign it slows down okay so it covers equal or it covers different displacement at an equal time interval so hence it is not moving in a uniform velocity in other words that kind of motion or scenario um, represents the non-uniform motion because the jeepney is accelerating okay so again uh, when we say non-uniform motion it is when an object covers different displacement 
but an equal time interval. When we say uniform motion, it is when an object travels or covers in a straight line with an equal or a constant speed. All right, following? Perfect. Now, uh, the reason being why I have a, a little review because our discussions for today will actually focus on motion in forces that is in the unit or on the first unit of grade 8 science subject so again uh, motion motion is always incorporated in our daily life but that is not the the uniform motion but we are uh, always engaged or doing this activity under or with the non-uniform motion and the primary cause of this motion is of course the, the force there are force there are a lot of forces in our environment now, in this module also, or in this uh, topic, um, we, we will uh, learn the effects, what is the effect of force in the motion, all right? So I hope uh, everything is still fresh on your mind about Newton's for, uh, three laws of motion, because this is the central uh, organizing principle in classical mechanics as we move along the, our discussions. Okay, but for the meantime, let us focus first on the effect of forces on the motion. Okay, we will start it and have a very quick refresher on the definition of the force. So when we say force, it is a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with one another. If and oppose this force can cause change on the motion or direction of an of an object okay all right if you push or pull the object will move so in physics pushing and pulling is a force so let us have some kind of uh, example here. So let me get this object. For example, if I will push this object, it moves. Then if I, will, if, if I will push farther, it moves farther. But when an opposite force is applied, I will push it back. Then the object stops or it actually moves back. And if I will push it in a different direction, then the object change its direction. In other words, force can make an object move, move faster, stop, or change its directions once it is interacted or counteracted by a certain force, of course, with a direction. But uh, let me try to ask you the simple question. Is it always the case that the force can bring about change in the state of motion of an object? So let us find out and dig deeper on the force. Because there are two types of forces. We have this balance force and the unbalanced forces. All right. So, but before we will discuss further about the balance and the unbalanced forces, let us uh, familiarize with the sum of the uh, terms and its definition. So, number one term is the magnitude. When we say magnitude, it refers to the strength of force. When we say magnitude, it refers to the strength of the force. And in physics, it is expressed in Newton as the unit of measure for magnitude. Another terminology also is the point of application. So the line of action is the straight line passing through the point of application. Now, another terminology is the line of action. Now, this line of action is a, is the straight line passing through the point of application 
So again, we have the, the following terminologies. We have the magnitude in it is the strength of force and it is expressed in Newton. Then we also have the direction and then this direction is expressed or represented by an arrow. We also have this line of action. This line of action is passing through a straight line which is what we call the point of application. So imagine there's a straight, uh, if this is an object, uh, this, there's a straight line here. This is where the application of the forces is being applied. This is a straight line or point of application or the line of action, okay? So to, to discuss about uh, balance and unbalanced forces, so let us have this is a very short activity. Let us have a very short activity. I have, we have a string. I have a string here, then a pen, and then a scissors. So let me tie the pen to the string and hang it. So what can you observe? The pen is a dress. And what are the forces that is acting on the pen? Let us cut the, the pen or the string. Now let us cut the string. What happened to the pen? Okay, so what happened to the pen? So the pen actually, what? It fall, okay? So let us have another example. So for example, this is a surface. This is the box. What happened to the box? Is it moving or not? Now let us apply a simple force. Uh, okay. Let me push it. What happened to the box? Is it moving? Let us pull it. Is the box change its position? Okay, so let us have a very short uh, discussions on the activity. All right, so during the time that the the pen was uh, was hung or was tied and then hung, so the pen is at rest. When we there, are, how many forces are involved? When, when in this state where the pen is at rest. So we have this tension force, the force that is an upward force coming from the string. And then there is a gravitational force or force of gravity that, that is trying to pull the pen because the force of gravity is find, found at the center of the earth. So when we uh, in this state, the pen is at rest because the forces are equal. Uh, the force of gravity plus the tension force that is equal in this manner where, while the pen is at rest. When we cut, during the time that we, when we cut the string, the pen falls on the ground. Because in that manner, the, the, the force, the tension force was released and then the force of gravity attracts the pen and it causes the pen down on or fall on the center of the earth. Okay, again, a while ago I discussed about why is it that the pen and the box is at rest. So the pen is at rest because there is a tension force that conceals or that counteracts the, act, the force of gravity. So again, uh, the box is at rest because of the upward natural forces that is acting on the box okay so that force or not that force is what we call the natural force the pen is also at rest the pen is also at rest in this way because of the tension force that pull the pen upward and both natural force and the tension force counteracts the force of gravity so in this way, the force is the, the balance, okay? Because the, the, the force of gravity and then the natural force or the tension force is counteracting the force of gravity that caused the object to stay at rest. 
unless another motion will counteract it will uh, disturb or it will change the movement or the motion of the box or on the pen all right so gets so that is that is what we call the balance force the balance the force is balanced if the if the force of gravity and the tension for is equal all right so we will stop here for the meantime because i know everything is overloaded with information please don't forget to subscribe and share my youtube channel for more updates and upcoming videos and then we'll have more TBS in the future. So on our next topic, we will discuss about the balance or the, the unbalanced forces. Thank you so much. This is Edward and goodbye for now.